Publish as many peer-reviewed papers as you can. That is the only real way you can stand out in your PhD program. Feed the beast. The university beast, the academic monster, it wants papers, it wants money, it wants you to go and broadcast your science and your research to the world. And uh, it really sets you up for success in the future. If you get known as someone who's very productive, who produces a lot of papers, that means more people want to collaborate with you. That means more people want to ride your coattails. Yes, seems weird. Coattails to success. All of these people will come out of the woodwork. The university will be more interested in your work. Your supervisor will be more interested in your work. And importantly, you will start to build up the foundation of your academic career incredibly strong for you to build into the future. Publishing papers isn't easy. It's not always easy. Some areas of research do allow themselves for more publications than others. One guy that I knew during my PhD, essentially he changed one little molecule, do an experiment, paper. Change the molecule, do the experiment, paper. Not all research areas are like that. Mine certainly wasn't like that. And therefore you do have to be careful about this kind of like pushing out publications if they're not ready. You know, push them out as quick as you can, but um, importantly, if you're pushing out rubbish, it can also make you stand out for all of the wrong reasons as well. One of the easiest ways to stand out as a PhD student is just be nice to work with. Do not underestimate the power of just being friendly, of delivering your work when you say you will, turning up on time, asking questions, being friendly to everyone, not just the people in power. That is a great way to stand out as a PhD student. One of my favorite things to do when I was a postdoc is go to the tea room, like at the tea time of different people and just get to know them and, Building those relationships really meant that I was able to embed myself within the culture of the university, but also if I had any issues, I, know, I knew who to go to, and also it's a warm introduction to that person. That, you know, they are more likely to help you out if they already know you and they see you as a nice, friendly person. Too many academic tea rooms that I've been to are barely populated, or like there's only sort of one or two people that really go there regularly. So building up a great community of people around you is also a great way to stand out, be nice. Also, just like professionally, there are just simple rules that we all know deep down inside anyway. So like deliver on what you say you're gonna deliver. If you say you're gonna turn up at a certain time, turn up. The amount of people that booked a time for a meeting with me and then never showed up was far too many. So don't be that person. And also from a supervisor's perspective, when I was supervising master's students and PhD students, I really liked to work with the people that were enthusiastic about their work. Remember that an academic's day is not the nitty gritty of science. They are far removed from the things they actually like doing, which is the science. So if you can be that person that comes with problems and solutions and speaks enthusiastically about the work that they know that they're sort of like wanting to be part of so desperately, but can't because they're so wrapped up in the academic environment in all the paperwork and all of the bureaucracy, then when those people turn up at your door as a supervisor, they are a ray of sunshine. And uh, it doesn't mean you have to be all like, you know, flowers and daisies and, and rainbows. It just means that you just gotta turn up and be sort of enthusiastic about your work. And that goes a really, really long way. So be nice to work with. As a postdoc, I slowly became bitter. I slowly became someone who I wouldn't want to work with. And you can learn more about that in my YouTube video. I'll put it up here where I talk about what academia really did to me and how I became a really bitter, horrible person. And you know, I made my own grave essentially in academia. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more is exclusive content only available for free. So go sign up now. The little alien says do it too.
If you want to stand out within your university or even a little bit further afield, my recommendation would be to make and build a relationship with your university communication or marketing team. It is very sort of uh, rare that I see a PhD student reach out to the marketing team to be like, hey, I've done this. Hey, maybe this is interesting to you. And you'll get no a lot of the time. Like, no, that's not right for us. But building that relationship, just being that person that they can go to if they're sort of struggling to find something for the for the newsletter or to put on the blog, you know, being that person is gonna help you stand out, absolutely no doubt. And uh, it's not a scary thing either. I actually developed a little bit of a template for reaching out to editors um, that I'll link in the description below that's now yours for free. Essentially, it's a way to get people excited about your research, you know. It's like, hey, you should publish this because, and and uh, reaching out to your university or communications team within the university um, and just say, hey, this is my work. This is why it's exciting. This is why I think you should put a, like, you know, a blog post or come and interview me about it. Um, people are always looking for content. University marketing teams are always looking for content to put on the blog, to put on their YouTube channel, to put on their own internal kind of communications, whatever it is, just reaching out Often, when you actually have something to report, as little as it may seem to you, it may help them and it will help you stand out within the university bubble. Another way to stand out is to look for opportunities and report them back to your supervisor or your research group. Now by opportunities, I mean anything that helps your academic career. Are there small grants that are available that no one else knows about? Look for those opportunities. Is there an opportunity to talk at conferences? Or is there a new conference or symposium that's starting up that you want to be part of? All of those things that you can collect from the outside world and deliver to your research group is incredibly valuable. Everyone's always so busy sort of uh, doing their own thing, their heads down in their own laptop, in their own work, doing whatever. And if you could just spend a moment to go out and look for new opportunities, new grants, new whatever, new opportunities to talk, whether or not it's opportunities to talk to the broader community as well. I know around Adelaide, there's always university uh, groups going to give talks in libraries or science in the pub or wherever it is. Just looking for those opportunities means that you're supervisor will be incredibly thankful because you're kind of doing some of the hard work. And if you can share that between your entire research group, I think you'll be amazed at the amount of opportunities you can find. So there we have it. That's what makes a PhD candidate stand out during their PhD program. Ultimately, papers, 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 papers. Feed the academic beast as much as you can, as often as you can. That will really make you stand out to the right people. But there are other ways to stand out. Clearly, you want to stand out for all the right reasons. So get in contact with your university marketing and communication team. How about trying to find those opportunities and reporting that back? And ultimately, just be nice to work with because when a nice person who's got a great kind of personal, professional brand stands in my doorway, it is so much nicer than having someone who I know is going to complain about something, is going to come with problems and no solutions, and is just going to make my life much harder. So there we are. That's how you stand out during your PhD program. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. And I'll see you in the next video.